Welcome back. May I say you're looking rather wonderful. If you're new, you look wonderful too, don't worry. Well, it's been a hot minute since the last video, to say the least. But, cometh the man, cometh the hour, cometh the new young box set. Um, so, as we know, Archives Volume 3 is here. It's literally bigger than my head, which... There are orbital bodies of the sun, which aren't bigger than my head. But this box set is 17 discs, 3 Blu-rays with 11 films. We're talking a lot of Neil Young here. So we're not going to be beating about the bush too much today, as the actress said to the bishop. But suffice to say, should you be familiar with previous sets, then just like that, you do get the wonderful box set with the, the poster that has the, the folder showing you the archive setup. You do get the amazing cloth bound book with all sorts of memorabilia and posters and behind the scenes photos and newspaper clippings and set lists and Polaroids and just a treasure to paraphrase new handwritten lyrics, set lists and then towards the back you get the the credits of every track which that's a treasure in its own right because there's even a few surprising additions in there there's so much in this set that oh, i've seen a few reviews of it and it's taken me two weeks to even contemplate doing the review um and i've seen a few reviews that basically just paraphrase neil's wikipedia because all they really say is, which you wouldn't even need to listen to the set to do. Uh, in the mid-70s, Neil Young was at a crossroads. Um, he ended up doing some great country stuff with Comes a Time and blah, blah, blah. And he did some really incredible electric stuff with Russ Never Sleeps, blah, blah, blah. And then the 80s hit and things went quite whiffy for him. But... On here you get to hear paths not taken, roads not trodden, and a different way of presenting his career. Recommended. I mean, you could write that without listening to a single note. Well, this note's not for them then, is it? Um, and I'm talking about major outlets who don't seem to have done more than listen to the Takes CD, the free CD that we got for pre-ordering this, which gives you a track from each disc to kind of give you a literal sampler. So what I'm going to do is a bit of an epic, probably, where I go through most of the highlights, if not all the highlights of this this here behemoth. So 17 CDs, 5 Blu-rays. Um, I'm going to ignore the Blu-rays, I'm going to be honest. Um, not because of anything on the contents, simply because I think this video is going to be long enough. Um, and my plan, let me know if this seems agreeable to your good self, is to cover them in a separate video uh, in which I'll also talk about some other Neil Young uh, concert films and, and the like. So let me know if that sounds positively perfect or not. But for today's purposes, I think 17 CDs. Considering I've done videos where I talk about one album for an hour, I think 17 is enough to be getting on with. And I'm going to ask your forgiveness in advance because this is such a behemoth of an undertaking. Um, you know, I'm so gallant as a pioneer that I'm really struggling to uh, to come up with what to say without taking notes, which is something I never do. I like to talk, as I'm doing now, off the cuff. But for, again, such an epic trek through over a decade of New Young's career, through 17 discs, it's too much. It's you don't get a track list in the box or anything, and the, the CDs themselves have Neil's questionable handwriting in places, so I couldn't just hold them up and go, and this track um, looks like it's got... No, um, so I have taken notes, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie about it. Um, so if you see me looking like this more than usual, that's why, um, because I'll be, I'll be reading from 
don't worry, they're not full notes. You're not going to be getting scripted content on this channel anytime soon. But they are buzzwords. So, you know, if I have to decipher, what did I mean where it says intense? Then you'll know. But the best place to start is usually the beginning. It's not always the most interesting. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll start there nonetheless. Uh, with... Across the Water, right? So Across the Water is a bit of an interesting one, um, as they all are, but this is interesting in a different kind of way because what this really does is it bridges the end of Archives 2 into Archives 3. So we've had some of the Budokan 76 and Hammersmith Odeon 76 material already. Here's the rest of it. Um, so we're getting the kind of complete shows over two volumes of, of Archives. So quite an interesting way of, of doing it. So what I'll do here is literally just jump right in and start talking about how, how the, the songs go for me. And I'm going to just be skipping chunks. None of the new stuff. I'm going to try and cover every new track here. God bless me. Um, but um, if it's been released on albums, don't need to talk about it. I will address up top, though, a couple of complaints. Uh, from people and they've been here since archives one. Oh, well that's been released on albums already. Yeah, this is archives This is how Neil wants to be remembered. This is his summation of a life. This is his musical autobiography So, you know, some of the album versions are exactly how he wants them to be remembered So that's how they are being archived literally Other complaints missing songs. I really want sad movies to be released it's still not been released. Apparently it's going to be in a live 2008 Stockholm version. I love it. It's such a great song from 1976. It's not on here. But, you know, again, it's not my story. It's Neil's story. It's his archives. It's his legacy. It's his yellow brick road down a very strange career um, that didn't always take him to the Emerald City. Sometimes took him on some very strange side paths which we'll certainly see um, towards the 80s and whatnot. Um, but it's not for us, I don't think, to say this should have been there instead of that. It's new story. For better, for worse, for all intents and purposes, it's new young story. So, um, Across the Water, um, disc one and two are both presented here. Um, Let It Shine is a song most familiar from the still Young Band version. Um, this is a much more slow and gentle, solemn acoustic version as opposed to the fuzzed out version on the Still Was Young album. Um, I, I love having both. Um, why choose when you can have it all? Uh, Mellow My Mind um, is a banjo only version, which gives it a very different take from uh, Tonight's the Night. Only Love Can Break Your Heart is gorgeous. It's got a real desolation around it um, with without obviously the big production of uh, After the Gold Rush, but it's it's terrific to hear just as this massive piano piece. No one seems to know is gorgeous. Um, and of course you get things like Heart of Gold on here, which I don't want to say they're tossed off, but there is an element of, okay, some people just paid to hear this, let's just, you know. There's never much experimentation when he plays Heart of Gold or, or uh, After the Gold Rushers. It, it, it tends to just be relatively straight every time he's done them for the last 50 years. Um, from from Heart of Gold, which has no surprises whatsoever, we come to our first real surprise. Um, here comes Country Home, which wouldn't be on an album for another 13 years, where it became one of the highlights of Ragged Glory, one of the heaviest albums of Neil's career and here it is with the same band 13 years earlier I'm thankful for my country brilliant stuff um, absolutely brilliant Could have, it shows that this song as much as it's perfectly in fitting with the godfather of grunge era of, of the late 80s it shows that it could also have slotted perfectly into the, the rust era um, as it kind of does here Cougar on the Sand a lot of love, uh, then follow. You know, who who else could do Cougar on the Sand as this big, epic, wailing, and then follow up with a lovely country popper like Lot of Love? 
but Neil Young. No, nobody else could really get away with it. Um, we get a couple of versions of Cortez the Killer on these two discs from, from the two different shows, Budokan and Hammersmith Odeon. And it shows that the same band on different nights with that kind of crazy horse, we don't always know quite where we're going, can take it in two totally different directions and still be brilliant in both ways. So this version on disc one has a real, I'm going to go a bit pretentious here, it's got an intense majesty where you can imagine it kind of conjures up the spirit of the savagery of, of colonialism. You can, you can hear, you know, he's dancing across the water. There's an ominous darkness to it. Um, where it's, it, you can hear the pain that these poor Aboriginals are going to suffer at the hands of of Cortez and his, his merry band to come in peace and, and then strip for everything they can. Um, you can hear it in the music. Um, what a killer indeed. But then flip over and you get disc two. Um, Human Highway, Needle and Damage Done, very similar to what you'd expect again. Um, Down by the River is a blistering version. Neil's vocals on it are much more tentative than than uh, they will be on most versions that you, you'll hear. So when he gets to the lines like, Together we may get away, you're not quite sure that he believes it this time. Gives it a very different edge when Neil's vocals are just a little bit more tentative and off. Um, kind of strung out. Um, like a hurricane, drive back, just class rendition. Especially like a hurricane. I mean, this is the year before Stars and Bars. Must have just blown people away. Cortez, again, wonderful version on here. But it's, it's more percussive, um, it's less intense, but it's more mournful, uh, more painful than the, the one on CD1. So this is the Hammersmith version. And then we get Homegrown. And, you know, Homegrown's all right with me. And it's amazing how a song like Homegrown, I saw someone moan about it and say, Homegrown again. That was a song that was never released until a few years ago. And yeah, it's been here, uh, it's been on Archives 2 in a different version, it's been on the Homegrown album, it's been on Chrome Dreams. But it's funny how songs can go from, I wish you'd released that, to again, piss off. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's great to hear as well because he introduces it and says, you know, we don't normally play this song um, unless we're at home, but since it's the end of the tour, here you go, and we get a really kind of druggy, ragged end of the tour. We're all about to collapse in a heap. Um, bleak version of it with a kind of melancholy but dark sense of humour to it. And then we get into... In fact, I'll just pull the box up and sit with it because I'm going to be reaching for it so often. One of the... First examples of the, like I was saying up top, people saying, oh, but so much of this has been released on Hitchhiker and Songs for Judy. Well, the disc's called Hitchhiking Judy. I don't think Sherlock Holmes needs to get involved to tell us Hitchhiking Judy probably involves quite a bit of Hitchhiker and Songs for Judy. Anyways, um, so it does include quite a lot, but it's also got, um, you know, that great version of uh, Powderfinger, which, you know, any time you hear that done acoustically is, I mean, I love the original version most, but an acoustic version of Powderfinger always brings it a totally different clean-cut feel, which gives it a real historical uh, aspect that the electric versions don't quite get across quite as well. Um, you know, Captain Kennedy... Um, would show up in Hawks and Doves quite a few years later. Um, it's got a few of the last Wilkes tracks here. Well, there was only two, but it's got, um, of course, Helpless, which was in the film itself. It's got the outtake that was only on the uh, the four-disc version of the last Wilkes, uh, Four Strong Winds, which, of course, Neil Woods would do in uh, Comes a Time, uh, the Ian Tyson song. Uh, not many covers from Neil over the years, apart from a few albums of covers, but... You know, certainly one. Um, Lost in Space is a, an original version here that would go on to Beyond Hawks and Doves, but it's a piano led version here, whereas it's a guitar led one, acoustic, on Hawks and Doves. And I always like that discrepancy too, where we can hear the difference in versions from acoustic 
to electric or piano to guitar, you know, just to hear different versions, even when the arrangement's very, very similar, it can be just fascinating to hear that. Snapshot and time. Um, and here, here's a question um, to anybody who doesn't have the super deluxe, if you will. Um, if you have the version that just has the CDs with no Blu-rays, how do they fill this box? Because there's Blu-rays in here, so without them there would just be a space. So I'm guessing that what they do is they give you this and then like this separately as two. So there's more artwork basically and more sleeves. Let me know. Um, so snapshot, because these are two completely unrelated discs here. Uh, snapshot in time was recorded at Emily Harris's house uh, with Nicolette Larson present, who would be Neil's short-term girlfriend, but you know certainly muse and musical collaborator until her, her untimely death. She was only forty-five when she she passed, but um, you know again, there's some stuff on here that's just absolutely sensational. Um, hold back the tears, um, gorgeous country rock, which shows the kind of dichotomy of this era, where Neil could go to this, the most beautiful songs, to the most intense, strung out stuff possible. Uh, Long may you run. Um, I mean, this this disc itself, it's just a home recording, so it is lower quality, but it shows the the intent of it which is almost like you know, I'm teaching you these songs and see what you think and maybe there's something here that we could do together kind of thing um, so it takes Long May You Run which is you know, it had just been the previous year the title track of the Still Young project um, and he is teaching it to Nicolette and Emma Lou and they all burst out laughing at the uh, the line about the Beach Boys which is you know great Hey Babe, um, recorded 1st of March 77, the day after he wrote it, literally. Much more comes a time than the version that we'd ultimately hear on American Stars and Bars, which is more over the top country. Peace of mind, favourite song of mine, different version here, the melody's all there, all it needs is a bit more production to push it forward to the slightly more uh, flowery version that we get on, on Comes a Time. Um, Sweet Laura LaRue, unreleased version. Um, Archives Volume 2 had a great track called Come Along and Say You Will. This is a partial rewrite of that. It's a very lovely and tender song. Um, Bad News Comes to Town, unreleased version. Would be reprised much later on uh, on the Blue Note Cafe archive series. Um, uh, there was also an earlier take on Archives Volume 2. It's fragile here. It's haunting and haunted at the same time, which is not something that's terribly easy to pull off. Um, Motorcycle Mama, fun run through, bluesy, obviously. Um, just everybody just kind of having a good time listening to this bluesy song from Neil. Barefoot, barefoot Floors is one of the highlights here of this whole box set for me. It's a gorgeous lullaby from Neil. Uh, Nicolette Larson would have a solo version of it um, in the 90s, but here it is, Barefoot Floors from Neil. Just absolutely beautiful, tender, sweet, just, yeah, one of the real highlights of this whole box set. And then Windward Passage by The Ducks. I reviewed The Ducks, Flying High, uh, in the Bootleg series, the first three volumes of the Bootleg series when that came out. And yeah, a lot of that album is reused here for, for this disc. But there's still some unreleased stuff. Sail Away um, could easily be the Stray Gators. Um, you know, Neil sings about teepees and boats and things. So, you know, you know you're in New Young territory when, when he does so. Um, he reprised it decades later at Farm Aid 2009. Kind of gentle country rocker. Uh, Windward Passage is extended from the, the high-flying album version, um, but it's a great instrumental, um, very frenetic, very cool, very very 77, but very cool. Um, and Crying Eyes is an unreleased original version that would later, a good decade later, turn up on life. Um, and it doesn't have the 80s sound here because we're still in the 70s, so, you know, time hasn't happened yet. Um, I mean, it's a much better version. And I like life. Life is one of my favourite 80s 
Neil Young albums apart from the very tail end and the very start. Um, but I like Life more than any of the other Geffen albums. And to me, um, this version of Crying Eyes could be a Moby Grape song. Maybe I'm thinking that because Bob Mosley's literally singing on it with Neil. But still, it's, it's brilliant to hear how a decade can completely change the, the feel of a song. Um, I wish the Ducks had done more. Oh, I really, really do. Because uh, I absolutely adore the, the Ducks. Um, Oceanside, Countryside should be next. Thank goodness my, my notes are corresponding to the way I've got them arranged. So. <laughs> uh, so this is all from 77, I believe, with a very rustic looking new one. What was I just saying about boats, for goodness sake? Um, it may have been as much better than the Honky Tonk version. It was on Archives Volume 2. It's even more country than the version on uh, A Treasure with the International Harvesters. Better recorded for sure. Um, dance, dance, dance. How many times did Neil try and slot this somewhere and it never quite got a home? Um, you know, from 1970 onwards. And here he is trying to, trying to find something. They finally put it on with Oceanside Countryside. This may be it. Uh, you know, it's certainly the most countryfied version of it. Um, just a fun, fun song that we all know, I'm sure. Peace of Mind has double tried vocals and it's stripped back a bit from the Comes a Time version. Uh, Comes a Time itself is similar but more jaunty, higher pitch, you know, loses the harmonies of the album version, as does Going Back, um, loses the, the uh, Nicolette Larson harmonies from the the album version suffers a little bit for that from my personal opinion because I love Nicolette's vocals but again we've got that album so we don't need to say oh I wish you hadn't included that no we can, nobody's coming for our versions of Comes a Time we get to keep both um, and if you feel like I'm rushing through any of these one again it's because I'm cutting out all the stuff that's been released on on uh, actual albums so next up speaking of Nicolette Larson it's Neil and Nicolette with the Give to the Wind Orchestra, 1977. Uh, Love Art Blues um, is uh, an unreleased version. We had one on Archives Volume 2. This is quite similar in arrangement, just a bit more countryfied. It's funny in retrospective. Um, I mean, this is quite a poorly recorded disc. I can't imagine this will be released as a standalone. Um, are you ready for the country? It's great because it kind of shows that the, the Gift to the Wind Orchestra are kind of halfway between the Stray Gators and Crazy Horse. Um, even though they're, you know, full orchestra in places, they can play this kind of ragged and, um, and offbeat stuff. Um, brilliant version of Are You Ready for the Country? Dance, Dance, Dance is on here as well. It was on the previous disc, but on this live version, it segues straight into... Um, Love is the Rose, which has been on Hitchhiker and Songs for Judy uh, and Decade, I think it was even on, wasn't it? Brilliant segue, very smart move to try and, okay, dance, 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 let's try it with another song, see if we can turn it into a sweet, I think it's the best version of it. Uh, Lady Wingshot, um, his tribute to Annie Oakley, has some brilliant military drumming to give it a, a quirky feel. Uh, being an unreleased song, I wish that the quality was just a little bit better in the audio because to miss unreleased uh, lyrics and things and, and not quite get the quality of the musicianship and uh, the vocals and the songwriting, it's always a little bit of a shame. Um, we're having uh, some fun now as it comes to time outtake. Um, it wouldn't affect the aesthetic um, of comes to time unless it replaced Motorcycle Mama as the kind of bluesy, fun song in the middle. I think it's the only place it would have worked. The real highlight of this is a brilliant cover um, with Neil and Nicolette doing their best. Grant Parsons, Emily Harris, uh, on Hank Lachlan's Old Standard. Please help me, I'm falling in love with you. Um, an absolutely brilliant, gorgeous version. Um, ugh, unreal, unreal. I hope that's up. Um, if it is, I'll stick it in the comments. Um, I know that this Neil has not wanted to stream this whole album, put it on Spotify, this whole box set. He wants it to be exclusive for a good while. 
I hope that's up so I can let you hear some of it. Um, ooh, we're on to The Boarding House, which, again, I think is one of the more famous things of this project that I think might get a standalone release at some point. We've got, um, I mean, it was four nights of uh, acoustic performances. Starts with the version of Shots. The Shots would be, of course, on Reactor um, in 1981. Um, 80. Um, and in a very fuzzed out, intense fashion. And here it is, solo acoustic. The complete opposite. And it really lets the song rating come to the fore. And it shows what a brilliant piece of work it actually is. I mean, I love that version on Reactor, but it just it lets it bloom in a completely different flower in, in this way. Birds is a, is a brilliant version, which if someone says it was definitive, I wouldn't argue with them. Girl on the Sand, brilliant acoustic rendition, which beats even the four-way street version for my money. Um, you know, but get live debuts of quite a few favourites here, like Thrasher and Ray Malama. Um, Powderfinger, brilliant acoustic take. What a show this is! Um, if you like your acoustic Neil Young, and if you do, if you don't, I'm not really sure why you'd watch much Neil Young stuff. Um, Disc Nine is 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 Boarding House Two, um, with Devo involved. There's Neil with the Sex Pistols T-shirt, um, and you know that version that was repurposed slightly. This is a different edit of uh, uh, Hey Hey My My Into the Black um, for the Human Highway film, which is one of the Blu-rays that's included here. <sighs> I love the music, hate the vocals. It's got the Devo Bidgey Boys vocals from Mark, um, which I just don't, I don't think they work. Um, I, I admire the, the intent to do something new and something fresh, but I think if they'd have played it just a bit straighter, there was actually a totally different new wave, new way for Neil Young to go, which could have changed the way the 80s approached him as well as him approaching the 80s, but it is what it is. Um, and then the, uh, the follow-up acoustic version of the opposite, My My Hey Hey, as opposed to Hey Hey My My, has someone from the audience shout, your new stuff's even better than your old stuff. And Neil Young says, thanks, today's better than yesterday. Which, what a brilliant comment. I, I mean, a, a nice thing for the guy to say, but for Neil to just remark that straight away off the cuff just sums up his approach, doesn't it? Um, Out of My Mind, um, of course, goes all the way back to the Buffalo Springfield debut in that kind of love and spoonful, uh, hippie-ish version, um, which... It's great, but then we had uh, the solo acoustic version on Canterbury House, 68, one of the very early archive releases. And here we get a piano-drenched version, which completely different again. So I'm all for just different versions from across the years um, to hear completely different approaches to the same song, where Neil would pick up and put down songs depending on how he felt about them, maybe remembered, actually something might work here and I'll pull it out, still does it to this day, you know, songs get live debuts decades and decades on, or they've only been played once ever and then they get reprised 40 years on, that kind of thing. The, this 10, Sedan Delivery, um, Bright Sunny Day is the only one to talk about here, because everything on here is either on Rust Never Sleeps or Live Rust, every single track. Which, again, people can complain about if they want, but that was such a massive part of his career, and they were such definitive versions on Live Rust and Rust Never Sleeps that, hey, he has to include them if, if, if he feels that's the best way to sum up that portion of his career. Hey? Uh, Bright Sunny Day is the only new song here. Um, bar Band Fun from Crazy Horse. I can see why it wasn't carried over, it was very slight. There's not much to it, but it's got charm, and I can imagine it being a bit more stripped back and working a bit more. Um, but for what it is, it's, uh, it's fun. Uh, switching over to, we're now hitting the 80s, Coastline, um, Hawks and Doves um, is, is 
an album which and Reactor are albums which have quite a lot on this. So if you're familiar with those two records, the Countryfied uh, Hawks and Doves and the really offbeat Crazy Horse, it's a very different style of Crazy Horse Reactor, um, then you'll know Stay in Power, Coastline, Union Man. Live music is better, bumper stickers should be issued. Um, Surfer Joe, Southern Pacific, you'll know those songs, so I don't need to discuss them. Uh, Winter Winds is an unreleased song. It's kind of slight. Um, there's just better songs that were available for Hawks and Doves, better new songs and better archival songs for them to dip back into. Sunny Inside would later be repurposed for this Notes For You. It's also on the uh, Blue Note Cafe version. Same melody and beat, but it's much more stripped back without the soul review take that that album has. Um, Get Up is a unreleased song entirely. And I don't know why that wasn't picked up again for this Notes For You and for the Blue Notes Cafe because that's a perfect little soul number, uh, a little soul stomper that could easily have fit into that era perfectly, which, hey, who am I to judge? But that should have been repurposed, but hey, we've got it now. Uh, we get into the second part of the box set here with one of the one of the words that strikes fear into some fans to this day, trans. Um, so, of course, this record contains a good chunk of trans. And I'll address this briefly. Um, David Geffen, piss up a rope. Um, to say that Neil Young was producing music that was un-Neil Young-like and suing him for, for such bollocks. Um, to, I mean, I can only assume he thought he was just going to get Harvest and Heart after Heart of Gold redux over and over. Um, he probably just wanted the equivalent of what Harvest Moon would be later on. Um, but Neil had always... I mean, did, did David Geffen just miss, miss the Ditch trilogy entirely? Where Neil just turned his back on stardom entirely to make offbeat, ragged songs and just... You know, no, I've got no time for that. Um, you know, and, and so much of this era actually good anyway um, Johnny is an unreleased um, we do get a lot of trans on here don't get me wrong um, so if you don't like trans and you don't like the even knowing the backstory of the robot talking to the child in the hospital but learn, teaching it to communicate if you don't like trans it's not going to convert you but still um, Johnny is an unreleased track here um, massive synths but not in a trans style so it's not got the vocoder Song about urban warfare. Um, soulfully still Neil Young, musical quite new for him. Island in the Sun, unfortunately not the Harry Belafonte song. Uh, gorgeous, it's a more kind of Caribbean-like lament um, as we get into here because it's also Johnny's Island, um, which is the original album that he submitted to Geffen and was told, try it again. So we're going to get this odd juxtaposition of this very... Uh, craft work like electronica with calypso um, which okay um, and it's kind of fun to hear them done, you know just jumping from one to the other and back again it's really quite fun um, Silver and Gold would be one of my favourite Neil Young albums of the 2000s when it came out but here we get the title track um, done as early as 1982 um, unreal. Um, to think that it sat for 18 years. Baffling. Um, it does not need the sing-along chorus, you know. The, Our kind of love never seems to get old. It's better than silver and gold. That does not need the choral chorus. That's no, 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 no. However, Raining in Paradise, uh, very slight. But I could hear Crosby Stills and Nash harmonising on it. And Neil submitting it to... Daylight again and making that CSMY record that could have worked. Uh, Big Peril, I love uh, that's an unreleased song. It's Hawaiian guitar, Beach Boys harmony, perfectly realized. Whether or not you like the Beach Boys harmonies and Hawaiian guitar doesn't matter for what it is, it's perfectly realized. Soul of a Woman um, is a song that would be all over the place. He would try it in various forms with the international harvesters and the blue notes. Here's a more ragged, crazy horse-like uh, version of it. 
Um, Love Hotel is an unreleased song. Um, played live only a couple of times. Needs a little bit work more melodically. Um, I don't think it works as the intended closer for for Johnny's Island as was. Um, but interesting. So now that we've got most of Johnny's Island released, what was it? What Neil Young needed instead of trying to no, know? I wouldn't have done any better. People would have mocked Calypso rather than mocked the electronic stuff but Neil was just on a different path he didn't want to just do solo acoustic or just Crazy Horse so whatever he was ready to do at this point was something new regardless as illustrated by the fact we're now on to a disc literally called Evolution which if you look at the pictures here tells you exactly what we're kind of getting there Berlin Neil Young the shock and pinks Neil Young blah 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 California Sunset, unreleased original, lovely banjo stuff with great melody, great vocals. Uh, My Boy is an unreleased original song. Uh, Knowing Neil's story with um, Zeke and how that inspired trans uh, is a gorgeous listen to to know the story behind their relationship Um, and how Neil struggled with having a, a son with such a a horrible cruel condition um, after having been already suffer not quite severely um, and, and, and how it pushed him you know to be a better person but initially a struggle um, so my boy is is a brilliant song um, the, the, yeah powerful powerful stuff old ways is very similar to uh, the album version Old Ways always baffles me. That was also cited by David Geffen as being un Neil Young. What's what's un Neil Young about that country record? Well, he'd done loads of country stuff. That's nonsense. And one of the uh, Nicolette Larson tracks from earlier on, he even says something like, this is kind of country... Well, it's not really country, but it's country-ish. You know? So he, he had that in mind for years and years. Um, we get a good ch- chunk of everybody's rock in here, of course. Cry, 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 Mystery Train, Paola Blues. Um, get Gone has that dun 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 dun, dun. Hey, Bo Diddley, which, of course, they had to try one of the Bo Diddley knockoffs. I Got a Problem. Um, would be reprised on Landing on Water. Very 80s. The version on Landing on Water is uh, very guitar-heavy. This is very synth-heavy and not in the best way. This is not the best use of synthesizers, to say the least. Um, Your Love is a different song to the Ducks version. Uh, Solid enough, but there's just no meat on the bones. You know, it's blues, even not much else. Uh, If You've Got Love is is reprised on here from Trans, um, but completely different version. Um, You know, trying to trying to give a, a different spin to a song that he's already put on an album. It's a very Neil thing to do, isn't it? Uh, Razor Love, one of my absolute favourite Neil songs ever. To hear it with drum machines and synthesizers should be sacrilege because that version on Silver and Gold is just gorgeous, but it's still gorgeous here. And the, the vocals are just powerful, exceptional incandescent with glory um yeah fantastic stuff on evolution evolution is a very bitty uh, disc so this won't be released standalone because it's too all over the place um but it's it's needed to kind of show the different phases of what neil was going through with the geffen era um disc 14 takes us on to the gray riders which was Stuff between 84 and 86, Grey Riders. Um, so Amber Jean, unreleased original um, version, um, would have fit on Stars and Bars, actually, if he'd, if he'd come up with it sooner. Lovely harmonies, great piano parts. Uh, Get Back to the Country drops the, the old ways uh, mouth harp, which, thank goodness, I hate the mouth harp. Um, always annoys me. Uh, very fun, very raucous. Um, there's loads of stuff on this from a treasure, uh, the 
previous archival release? Are you ready for the country? What might have been Soul of a Woman? Uh, Nothing is Perfect is one of the songs Neil played at Live Aid to some very baffled audiences who wanted just the hits. Thank you very much. Very similar to the version on A Treasure. Uh, Time Off for Good Behaviour is a great little song, um, a, a new song, a new unreleased song. A kind of protest song about um, jailing people for drug dealing when it's only dope and, you know, come on. And in these days where so many states have legalised it, it comes across totally differently again. Um, but yeah, it's, it's funny, but with a kind of gallows humour in a country style. I can imagine Johnny Cash doing it. Uh, great stuff. Um, this Old House would be recorded by Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young on American Dream, um, which isn't a bad version on American Dream, but this is just better, more powerful, purer. Um, it, it's got fiddles instead of harmonies from Crosby, Stills & Nash, but if you can accept that, then you'll love it. It's absolutely great. Uh, Interstate, we got that released last year in a different version on Smell the Horse, the EP that came with the Ragged Glory Deluxe they're reviewed on the channel, um, but here we get to hear uh, the kind of louder and, and angrier version um, of that, which fantastic. Um, and then we move on to the album Touch the Night, which is Neil with Crazy Horse, which should be I'm having to flip between discs here. here. Uh, first track is an unreleased song just called Rock. It's a bit dumb. I mean, the chorus is literally just rock. Uh, there might have been something there in a kind of fun, bloutish way, but as it is, it's heavy and riff laden, but not much else. Uh, so Tired has a kind of Tom, Tony Iommi vibe to it um, with, you know, massive riffs. riffs and there's something there, but just needs to come out. It feels like Crazy Horse and Neil are rediscovering themselves. What are we in the mid-80s? Who are we? Um, Violent Side is rawer than the version on Landing on Water. Um, it's so ragged that it almost loses the melody, which is great, you know, because Crazy Horse always have that to them, that they can be so offbeat and, and ragged that sometimes the melody will just vanish, and it does here. Um, I, I wish the audio quality was a little better on it. Uh, Your Love, more hard rock stuff, just missing a bit of magic to turn it into something a bit important. Um, it's just, a, you know, again, some songs have never been released for a reason. Um, Barstool Blues, I wish it was better recorded because it's a scintillating live version of the Zuma track. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, the highlight here, and again, one of the real highlights of the whole box set Touch the Night itself um, it drops the studio synths from the Landing on Water version it's 11 minutes, it's a Crazy Horse epic and it stands up to previous Crazy Horse epics now this is the definitive version and if you like you know, Crazy Horse epics this will be your cup of tea but if you want to hear what Crazy Horse in 1984 were still capable of with Neil before they found themselves again with freedom and with ragged glory, then title track here um, is wonderful. Uh, Road of Plenty should be next. There we go, Road of Plenty. Um, so again, loads of stuff on here has been released elsewhere. Landing on Water, you know, tracks like Drifter, Happy Dream, Weight of the World, more. Um, but Road of Plenty itself, Road of Plenty itself, um, is a very proto El Dorado, which of course would be on the El Dorado EP. Uh, really solid, crazy horse workout. Um, it would have fitted onto Freedom, no problem whatsoever. Just as it is here, no problem whatsoever. We never danced. Takes out the ethereal backing vocals and the drum machines, and it gives us a beautiful version here. Brilliant. We never danced. Again, a real highlight of this whole box set. When Your Lonely Heart Breaks, the original is one of my favourite. Again, Life is, is a really underrated Neil Young record for me. One of my favourite Neil Young albums of the 80s. Um, but this is a different version. Um, it has the sparseness of the original, but it doesn't have the reverb. 
So it gives it a much more live, fresh take rather than the slightly sterile version of the album, even though I love it. Um, so yeah, again, loads of that record has been previously released. And Summer Songs, uh, Neil released this uh, online as a, was it during lockdown? Um, just as a, here's an unreleased album for you to listen to on, on the website on Neil Young Archives. This, I think, will be released on its own because it works as an album, Summer Songs. I will not be surprised if this comes out in due course on its own. Um, American Dream, the title track to American Dream by Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young is an overproduced mess. Here, it is a gorgeous acoustic song, solo acoustic, which, listening to it, you think, why on earth was it decided to put pan pipes and give it this over-the-top, yacht, bad yacht rock production on American Dream. I mean, it's perfect here. I don't understand. Um, someday, Freedom's version is good. Um, this version here is a gorgeous piano ballad. Um, again, you could easily call it definitive because it works so well in the context of this being an album. Uh, For the Love of Man... Again, just a piano ballad, or ju just quote-unquote a piano ballad. Um, brings out the song that's always been buried there because it was released as late as 2012 on Psychedelic Pill. So 25 years on from this, it was released on Psychedelic Pill in a different form. And that was such an overblown, in the best way, Crazy Horse record that a more sparse, introspective song was kind of lost this restores that song to its should have been glory. So For the Love of Man stands out here, whereas it was buried on Psychedelic Pill because it just wasn't the context that the song deserved and needed, and this is. Um, one of These Days is one of my favourite Neil Young songs of the 90s. Here's the version five years before the Harvest Moon version, but my favourite version is on Dreaming Man 92, an early archive uh, volume. Um, brilliant stuff here, though, is, is jauntier than the original. I think Neil made a smart decision to slow it down a little bit because by slowing it down, it gives it a much more retrospective melancholy, which you'll, you kind of lose here. But, you know, it's such a great song anyway that who cares? Um, to get different versions, yeah. That's our jam. Name of Love um, was also on American Dream by CSMY. It was never as bad as American Dream was in that. And in some ways I do prefer the CSMY version. But this is still gorgeous, still pretty as hell. And Last of His Kind is the last track in this whole box set. Um, and it's about the plight of the farmers. Um, and it's been uh, played at many as a farm made over the years. Um, never been released on an album till now. Um, great closer, um, and it's a cause very close to Neil's heart. I mean, he got some criticism for Farm Aid um, when he initially pitched just the idea when he was on stage at Live Aid because his point wasn't to hell with the African children, let's support our own. His point was people are starving at home as well, and we're not doing anything to help the farmers who are being squeezed out on the left by the conglomerates and on the right by the governments and their lack of subsidies. Let's help them too. They're the salt of the land. Um, so, you know, he, like a lot of his career, misconstrued. So to go out on that, um, a cause which has been uh, a massive part of his career over the, the last nearly 40 years, perfect, absolutely perfect. He pauses for breath. And again, there's still these three. So let me know, what if you have the CD only version, what takes up the room that these three take? This is the Blu-rays. Again, I'll come back, I think, and do something with the Blu-rays um, and, and then recommend some other Neil Young uh, DVDs and whatnot. Um, we'll, we'll see where we go with that. But oh, this has been epic enough. Again, um, I don't imagine too many people will want to sit and listen to me having done this whole lot, but 
needed to document it for a couple of reasons. One, this channel covers every Neil Young project as it's released. And of course, we waited a few weeks because anybody like the magazines who reviewed this within hours, you're not letting it sink in, so no. Um, but number two, the it's getting a very superficial review from most places, as I said up top. So I'd like to go in a bit more depth, as I've done. Um, not for any, oh, I know the truth and they don't, just because I'd like to think that if I was a super fan of somebody else, um, the, as I have been before I started making videos, I'd watch an hour-long video talking about this kind of thing. Um, so, you know, somebody out there might be the same um, and think, I'm glad somebody's gone into a bit more depth. So what this box set really proves, what this behemoth, if I can even lift it with one hand, really proves is that news career, this isn't an exercise in apologising for the 80s. It's not an exercise in saying, hey, the 70s were great, weren't they? But, uh, hey, you know, the 80s had some, some smashing stuff too. You've just not heard it in the right context. It's an exercise in autobiography. It's an exercise in archivism. And it's an exercise in documentation. For better, for worse. None of this is Neil saying, you should love this. This is, this is the thing that you should like. This is him just saying, here it is. This is who I think I was. Take it or leave it, but it is what I think represents my career. And three volumes in with two volumes remaining. Oh, Neil, long may you run. Long may you run. This is a pleasure, a treasure indeed, to paraphrase one of the standalone International Harvester releases. But I think that's enough, folks. I think that's me warm. Wittered on enough for one day. Thank you for your patience. Um, for our film fans, you're going to get a whole bunch of Hammer in October. Whew, but I won't even explain it now because I need a drink. My throat's gone. There's a frog in my throat. Maybe the frog can do the review, is it? Anyway. Folks, keep on rocking in the free world.